Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak to the table bill 203, the Election Amendment Act. Uh, Mr. Speaker, for me and for many of my colleagues, uh, particularly on this side of the aisle, democracy is seen as a bedrock of uh, foundation to our society. It is what this nation and our province were founded on. Allow me for a brief moment to take this house back in time to 1905. It was during this year that the province that we know came, that we know and come to love today as Alberta came into existence as a province within the United Confederation of Canada. Without delving into the details of provincehood for fear of boring my colleagues uh, in this house, it is important to revisit the spirit that motivated Albertans to be in the act of pursuing, pursuing provincehood. Mr. Speaker, these individuals wanted one thing, democratic representation. With a booming population in centres of the then Northwest Territories, these pioneer Albertans believed in having the right to greater representation by a population. They wanted democracy to prevail in their livelihoods, one free from a large power that would influence decisions for the people. Like these pioneer Albertans who fought for freedom and democracy, I stand here today in this House to fight for the preservation of democracy, to ensure that we have an open, responsible and accountable democratic government. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that no government should have the power to influence the outcome of an election. This type of corrupt practice has been used in nations around the world and has been a practice frowned upon by the international community, including Canada. Yet, in this very own country and in this very own province, the government has, in the past, unfortunately misused their office and the influence that comes along with it. In the past, Mr. Speaker, we have seen the government make announcements in grandiose press conferences while a by-election is happening. The worst of these pertain to funding during the middle of an election, funding for new infrastructure projects, funding for cities and towns, you name it, they fund it. As you know, Mr. Speaker, government announcements are in their very nature a tool that can be used only by those currently in office. This creates an imbalance during what should be a fair fight. You see, unlike the parties and the candidates running against the party in power, the governing party has the power of the purse. They can choose when, where, and how much money a particular project or place can receive. With a power like this, the public purse has the potential to become a bribe machine during elections or by-elections and can be especially abused by the governing party when they are in fear of losing power. With this current framework during the middle of an election writ period, the government of the day has the power to allocate public funds to a politically sensitive object or make some other policy announcement to the riding or ridings where by-elections may be happening. This not only makes all politicians look bad, but puts public servants who help organize these press conferences in a very uncomfortable spot where their bosses are telling them to use government resources for electoral gain. Mr. Speaker, when I had the idea of bringing forward this private member's bill, I thought of uh, two situations in my constituency, and the first one was of tow truck operators. Tow truck operators, Mr. Speaker, are not benefited the safety of highway traffic workers or uh, uh, elector, uh, officers of the law who have special markings for their vehicles. Tow truck operators, Mr. Speaker, have uh, the great danger and fear of being struck and injured in the performance of their duty of retrieving uh, vehicles on the side of the road. Mr. Speaker, that type of legislation can be changed through regulation. Also, Mr. Speaker, I had uh, the unfortunate uh, circumstance to sit across the table in one of my constituency offices with the mother of a son who was killed on the evening uh, prior to his graduation, uh, driving into the back of un- uh, and improperly uh, lighted farm machinery. Mr. Speaker, it was extremely moving for me that the mother of this child did not want to seek any vengeance or uh, revenge upon the operator of that farm machinery. She simply wanted to get the regulation changed. And Mr. Speaker, when I was thinking of uh, this uh, legislation to come forward in this chamber, I thought of something that we can all do and we can all change to make what we do and how we manage this chamber in a better fashion. So with that, Mr. Speaker, Bill 203 attempts to change 
the way of running government, not to change the way in which government conduct, can conduct its normal business, but to prohibit the malpractice of siphoning money to areas of political interest, in other words, attempting to buy votes. It prohibits the government from publishing announcements during a writ period. The impetus for this bill was the inappropriate use of government resources we saw during the by-elections last fall. The idea of prohibiting the publishing of government announcements during a writ period is not a new one. In fact, our prairie neighbours to the east, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, have already adopted similar legislation and have since placed it into law because they recognize how tempting it is to misuse government powers for electoral gain. Not only has it been viewed as an effective measure in these provinces, but it has been proven to, to provide a greater sense of democracy by providing an equal playing field for all political parties during an election, including the party in power. The governing party is not allowed to use its power to persuade voters to vote for them based on cynically timed announcements. Not only is Bill 203 an already existing law in neighboring jurisdictions, it is also a bill that the current governing party happens to agree with. Manitoba Premier Gary Doerr passed a bill almost identical to this one almost a decade ago in a successful attempt to restore democratic practice during election periods in his province. In both this legislation, which we based this idea on, and in Saskatchewan, there are exemptions for all kinds of emergencies, employment, health, and safety issues, so that the government is by no means at a standstill. Government can still act fully. It just cannot publicize present and future decisions while a writ is dropped. Mr. Speaker, it is about respect for voters. In Wild Roads, we like to champion ideas that are the best interests of our constituents, regardless of what political party they may come from. Furthermore, the current Premier of this province, who sits daily in this House, was once publicly voiced, ha, once, excuse me, who sits daily in this House, once publicly voiced her support for a bill like this. In a press release dated November 9, 2014, the member for Edmonton Strathcona called for, and I quote, a series of changes that would effectively pr protect Albertans from several forms of inappropriate behavior demonstrated by the PCs over the last several years. These series of changes included a, a clause called for, quote, fixing the Election Act to prohibit MLAs from using government resources during elections or by elections. The idea was good then, and I believe it is a good idea now. We all know there are a lot of transparency and accountability issues that need to be addressed. There is even a special select committee created whose mandate it is to start on this monumental task. But as the chair already admitted, they won't be able to get everything, get to everything over the next year. So I'd like to take this item off their plate and get this straightened out before there are any by-elections, Mr. Speaker. Let's show the people that this House can work together to get things done. Bill 203 does exactly what the opposition parties were calling for last fall and is what both Wild Rose and the NDP pledged to do in our campaign platforms. Mr. Speaker, I believe that's the beauty of this bill. It is a bill that attempts to be as bipartisan as possible, and it attempts to remove politics and partisanship from legislation in the hope that this piece of legislation can successfully be passed in the interests of all Albertans. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to take a moment to remind this House why this bill matters and why it is in the interest of their MLAs and most importantly as Albertans to support this bill. Mr. Speaker, it is Remembrance Day, a day in our national history to mark the ultimate sacrifice that tens of thousands of Canadians have made or are currently making to keep our true north strong and free. Mr. Speaker, these brave men and women have fought or are currently fighting day in and day out to defend our rights and freedoms that we take for granted. One of these freedoms includes the ultimate freedom of democracy, the right to choose your government without influence, interference or manipulation from government. 
It is this pure democracy that Albertans have come to expect from their government. Sadly, Mr. Speaker, that is not the case.